This tutorial explains how to add a marginal plot to a ggplot2 graphic in the R programming language. So without too much talk, let's dive into the R code. In this video I will show you several examples and all of these examples are based on the data frame that we can create with lines 2 to 5 of the code. So if you run these lines of code you can see at the top right of RStudio that a new data frame object is appearing which is called data. And if you click on this data object a new window is opened which is showing the structure of our data frame. And as you can see our data frame contains many rows and two different columns which are called X and Y and both of these columns contain random numeric values. Now if we want to draw these data with the ggplot2 package we also need to install and load the ggplot2 package as you can see in lines 7 and 8 of the code. I have installed the package already so for that reason I'm just going to load it with the line 8 of the code and after running this line of code we are able to use the functions of the ggplot2 package such as ggplot and geompoint as you can see in lines 10 and 11. So if you run these lines of code you can see at the top right of RStudio that a new blot object is appearing which is called ggp and we can draw this blot to the bottom right in RStudio by running line 12 of the code and after running this line of code you can see that we have created a scatter blot which is showing the input data that we have created before. Now let's assume that we want to add marginal blots at the margins of our scatter plot. Then we first need to install and load the GG extra package as you can see in lines 14 and 15 of the code. I have installed this package as well so for that reason I'm just going to load it with line 15 of the code and after running this line of code we are able to use the functions of the GG extra package such as GG marginal. And now we can use the ggmarginal function in combination with the plot object that we have created before to add marginal plots to our scatter plot. So in line 17 of the code I'm using the type argument to be equal to density. So if you run this line of code you can see at the bottom right that our plot is updated because now the margins of our scatter plot show the densities of our x values and of our y values. So as you have seen in this first example if we use type equals to density then we add density plots at the margins of our ggplot2 graphic. However we can also specify different types. So in the next example I'm using type histogram. So if you run this line of code you can see that our plot is updated once again. And this time the histograms of our x and y values are shown. If we use the type box plot, as you can see in line 21 of the code, box plots are added at the margins. If we use type violin, as you can see in line 23 of the code, violin plots are added at the margins of our plot. And if we use a combined type argument, as you can see in line 25 of the code, so in this case we are using the type densigram, then we can even add marginal plots with multiple plots on each margin. So in this case we are showing a histogram and a density plot on top of this histogram. That's all I wanted to explain in this video. In case you want to learn more on this topic you may check out my homepage statisticsglobe.com because on my homepage I have recently published a tutorial in which I'm explaining the content of this video in some more detail. I will put a link to this tutorial into the description of the video so you can find it there. If you have liked this video or if you have any questions let me know in the comments section below. I'll try to respond to all comments as soon as I can. Furthermore, make sure to subscribe to my YouTube channel to get notified about future video releases. I have already published about 500 videos on this channel and I'm releasing new videos on a daily basis. Thanks a lot for watching. See you in the next video.